Today, in our study of labor in the American colonies, we're going to take a look at the story of John Punch. John Punch is known as one of the first enslaved people in the United States, and his story is a little bit unique, but there's some parts that we just don't know, and so we'll fill in based on what we know happened in general. So John Punch was born in West Africa, probably around Cameroon, sometime between 1619 when the first Africans came to Jamestown, Virginia, and 1630 is when John Punch would have come to the American colonies. He was in West Africa and probably he came enslaved, coming on this middle passage, which was the most horrific part of the triangular trade. Um, millions of Africans were brought in ships that were very, very overcrowded. You can see here a diagram of exactly how crowded it would have been on a ship. You can see there's no room. So John Punch would have been one among hundreds of people crammed into a ship with very little space. But the goal of the ship captains was to get as much money as possible by having as many people that they could sell as possible. So a terrible voyage across the Atlantic. Once in Virginia, John Punch was possibly enslaved, but it's not really clear. Some early Africans arriving in what is the American, the American colonies may have been more of indentured servants. It's not clear, but he was definitely a servant of some kind, enslaved or indentured. Either way, he was a servant to Hugh Gwynn, and he did not have his freedom. Hugh Gwynn was a member of the Virginia House of Burgesses, Keep that in mind. We'll be talking about the Virginia House of Burgesses and what they did later on in this unit. He was near Jamestown, not in Jamestown proper. It would have been another town that he called home. But Hugh Gwynn also had many other indentured servants to work on his tobacco plantation. And those indentured servants would have included women. The people who were serving Hugh Gwynn would have been both African and European. John Punch married a woman. We don't know her name, but we do know that she was a white woman sometime in the 1630s. And to them, there was a son that was born in 1637. You go 20 years in the future, and an African man would not have been marrying a white woman. So it was unusual in that respect. But the thing is, John Punch apparently did not like Hugh Gwynn very much. Three years after his son, John Bunch the first was born, John Punch, the father, and two other indentured servants, who were both from Europe, ran away together to Maryland. They were caught and brought into court. And they were given different punishments. The two men, one of them from Holland and one of them from Scotland, the two white men, were given an extra four years of work. That was their punishment. So um, they were going to work one extra year for Hugh Gwynn beyond their initial contract. And then they would have to work three years for the colony of Maryland, but just an extra four years of work. John Punch, on the other hand, was given a lifetime of enslavement for Hugh Gwynn. He would have to work for Hugh Gwynn for the rest of his life, not just an extension of a contract. And so this is where some, a lot of historians think John Punch may have started out as an indentured servant. At the time, it was already a practice to enslave Africans for life or some kind of indenture for life. But in court records, because of this court case where he was given enslavement for life as a punishment, John Punch is one of the first men that we can find that we are certain was enslaved for life in the, in the colony of Virginia or anywhere in what is now the United States. So John Punch existed at a time that was kind of a unique moment in history of the American colonies, before there were a lot of laws governing slaves. And so John Punch, while he was enslaved, he had married a white woman and they had had their son together during their son's lifetime. Virginia passed a law saying that, well, is the child going to be a slave or not? How do you decide? Virginia's law said that the descendants would be based upon the status of the mother. So if the mother was enslaved, the children were enslaved. But because John Punch's wife was white and had been an indentured servant, she was free at the end of her period of indenture. And so all of John Punch's descendants were also free people because their mother or grandmother or great, 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 great grandmother was not enslaved. So from here on out, please realize that this is not necessarily typical of what happened with families, but it is an example of what, what could happen. John Punch's descendants include two 
quite famous men. Fred Bunch was the first black winner of the Nobel Peace Prize. He was given the Nobel Peace Prize for helping to establish a more secure peace in Israel. He was awarded in 1950. Another famous person you may know who was a descendant of John Punch is President Obama. <laughs> 